So today we're just going to break down stocks, index funds, ETFs, just so you can get a broader picture. This is more for newer investors that are trying to understand the market. In the stock market, you can purchase stock, which means that you are just part ownership of a listed company. Some of these you might recognize, Coca-Cola, McDonald's, Apple, and then Tesla, Amazon, and Meta. Stocks are broken up by subject. So stocks could be listed under technology, they could be listed under healthcare, financials such as banks, consumer discretionary, which would be like Coca-Cola, communication services, which could be AT&T or Verizon. You could have industrials like Caterpillar. You could have consumer staples like CVS. And the list goes on and on. There are all different types of stocks, whether it's energy, utilities, materials, real estate. See, if you're new to the stock market and you're struggling where to look, I always recommend going to the S&P 500, which means that each company has a greater than 10 billion in assets. And you can scroll through and you can see that Apple's number one, then they have Microsoft, Amazon, Nvidia, Google, Tesla, and I'm sure you've heard of these companies. But you can scroll through all 500 just to give you an idea of what quality companies look like. This gives you a good perspective and a good range in all of those different sectors that we were talking about so you can get an idea on what are the most popular stocks that people trade. So let's take my portfolio for example. You can see that in all of my accounts, I own about 94% in stocks, 1% in foreign stocks, and 5% is cash. So you just have to keep in mind when you're trading stocks or owning stocks, it's good not to be too overly weighted in one stock, such as Apple, such as Google, such as Tesla. You want to have a nice balance in case one of them fails. So if Apple goes out of business, your whole portfolio doesn't go under. So it's always good to spread out your risk. And I like to limit my stock holdings to five to eight percent max of my total portfolio so if i had a hundred thousand dollars i'm only going to have five to eight thousand dollars invested in apple what is an etf an etf is just a type of pooled investment security that holds multiple underlying assets in fancy words that just means that you own a bunch of stocks within one etf so an etf can hold up to 300 companies 500 companies a thousand companies and let me show you an example so you can see and all those companies are just individual stocks here i'm just using the fidelity website because that's mainly where i trade and all my assets are but all of these six are all etfs so a good example is look at fbcg this is the fidelity blue chip growth etf this just telling you that it invests in large cap companies, such as the S&P 500. Then you can move to FGRO, which is growth companies, which it's telling you that it inexpensively priced based on less three to seven year growth. And then you know, the list goes on and on. They have fancy names for them. You have Fidelity New Millennium ETF. You have the Blue Chip Value ETF, the Magellan ETF, the Real Estate ETF. So you can invest in a wide variety of ETFs. But let me tell you, they're not all created equal. Some have more expensive fees and they'll cost you money in the long term. So now because this is my channel and I like to keep things simple, anytime that you're gonna pick an ETF, the first thing I want you to look at is the expense ratio. Clicking on expenses, we can see that this ETF is charging you 0.59% each year. That is a very high expense ratio. When you're looking for expense ratios, you want them to be at least 0.08 and under. If you go to my other videos, all the index funds that I recommend are either free or they're like 0.03% expense ratios. You want them to be very small expense ratios because this is what can ruin your portfolio over the long term and cost you thousands of dollars. So where do you look for an ETF that's low cost? I'm on the Fidelity where you can screen for your ETFs. We're going to click under Fidelity. And next, we're going to click under All Fidelity ETFs. And because we were so focused on expense ratios, what I want to do is I want to show you an easy way just to nullify that. So you're going to, so on the left tab right here, you can see Net Expense Ratio. You're going to click on that. Now, when you're looking at Net Expense Ratio, you can see right here you have 0 0.08, 0 0.21, 0 0.36. Notice how they're not even. Click on the top, one click and it's going to put an order for you. It puts from high to low. So now we're going to click it one more time. Now you can see we start from the lowest, 0 0.08, 0 0.08, 0 0.08. These are all your 0 
expense ratios. And as I scroll down, you're gonna see that they're gonna get more expensive. If you wanna make it even a little bit easier, all you have to do is over here, you can see very low. It says 24 out of 893 ETFs. Click that. Now we're only gonna get cheaper uh, net expense ratios for ETFs. Keep in mind that ETFs are usually a little bit higher fees compared to index funds because they're not passively managed. So if you look here, you can see different ETFs now, at least in the net expense ratio, and then you can start searching through them. And you can check out my other videos because I have more videos on going through ETFs, but I just want to give a quick rundown on how many you can really find just by a simple search. That's all I have for you, just stocks versus ETFs. Check out my other channels. I have plenty on index funds, different trading, my P&L, my crypto portfolio, strategies, long investments. Whatever it is, I probably have it here on this channel for you. So just check it out. Tell me what you like, comment, like, subscribe. Always appreciated. All right, until next time.